Welcome everybody. I'm Silvano Cerza, a software engineer currently working in Arduino. I'm part of the tooling team and one of the main developers of the Arduino CLI. Arduino is an open source hardware and software company, project, and user community that designs and manufactures single board microcontrollers and microcontroller kits for building digital devices. In the course of developing software downloaded and used by millions around the world, we have found it vitally important to be aware of the quality and performance of our software. In this talk, I'll be telling you the story on how we, the tooling team, started using Datadog in an unusual way to understand how successful are some of our open source projects, including the Arduino CLI. The Arduino CLI is one of the most important projects of the company. As the name implies, it's a command line tool that can be used to compile code, upload it to our boards, and lots of other things. It's also the backbone of the next version of our new IDE, the IDE 2.0. Anyway, I won't be talking about software monitoring, collecting metrics from users or servers and the like. I'll be talking about something easier to grasp that everybody can easily understand, and information that we can share with developers and the community alike. That is the total number of downloads of our open source projects, a simple but meaningful metric. Build failures too. More interesting to developers, but also to members of the community that uh, use the nightly builds and want to be on the bleeding edge. Our story starts with a usual question that every developer asks himself at least once. How do I know people are using my software? The first thing that comes to mind is adding metrics to, uh, to it. That's useful, since you can also track other meaningful information, but that puts a burden on the users. They might not like being tracked, and we fully respect their privacy. It can also be disabled easily client side, so we might lose some precious information. So you keep thinking, what else can I track? What information is valuable? And at last you get it, the download counts. And this is exactly the problem we had with the Arduino CLI. We didn't know if people were actually using it or not, and neither we could add invasive monitoring systems to it. So we decided to go with the simple solution, monitor downloads. But we had another problem. We have multiple distribution channels, the official Arduino website and the GitHub releases page for each of our different projects. We couldn't simply read the number and call it a day. Neither we wanted to. What we really wanted was collect this information and show how the number of downloads to the success of the project grew over time. At the time, other teams were already using data to monitor our backend infrastructure. So this was settled. We know where to get the information. We're still missing an important piece though. How do we get the data from our distribution channels? And this is when the data of GitHub action comes, comes into play. That's been created by Massimiliano Pippi, bless his heart, and thanks so much. Since we were already using GitHub workflows for running tests, building new releases and whatnot, this is the best solution for us. As a small team, we could leverage knowledge we already had. We didn't need to learn new tools, so we, come up with, we could come up to speed and see results right away, less than a day. Let me show you how we did it. I avoid showing the entire GitHub workflows and focus on the important parts. If you want to look at the work workflow, it's fine. I'll leave some links in the slide. Both workflows that gather downloads from GitHub and Arduino are extremely similar, apart from the logic that gets the numbers. We won't delve into how we request that information since that's not the scope of this talk. In both cases, we have three steps. One to request the number of downloads, one to send the metrics to Datalog, and one to send an event to Datalog in case of failures. Notice how we must set a secret with our API key to make the action work correctly. We store the key in the repository secrets, as usual. The metrics data instead is returned by the fetch step of the workflows. As I said, I won't go in details of those steps. Just know that the output of the step is a string containing a JSON array with the download counts for each released asset. And that's it, you're done. You, you're getting download now. If you want to know how we get the downloads count, feel free to take a look at the workflows that I linked in the slide. It's all open source after all. But what if there have been issues fetching the information or the workflow failing in some unforeseen way? 
you must handle that. So in using the same action, we send an event to the dot to that dot only in case of failures. As you can see, this step is identical apart from the different tags CDN, Arduino CDN, and uh, GitHub. We could avoid sending failures in to that really, and use a custom step or some other action to notify the developers on Slack, email, or whatever we want. I think it's much better lever leveraging Datadog in this case to collect failures, since we can create an historical view, but also because we can easily uh, use uh, uh, multiple channels to notify developers. And it won't require editing the, editing the workflows to add new ways of communication. Now that we push all the information we wanted to Datadog, we can start building our dashboards to show some graphs. Recently, we started gathering this information also for the new Arduino IDE 2.0. Even if still in beta, we already had a good amount of downloads. As you can see from the screenshots of our dashboards, we can already get some interesting insights. Most of the users of the Arduino CLI are on Linux, while most of the users of the Arduino IDE 2.0 are on Windows. Monitoring the nightly build failures is also quite easy. The only different thing are the tags pushed. And here are both monitors for nightly and stats collection failures. Right now, they're all green, so we're more than happy. And this is uh, the end of our story. How uh, now a small team like us solved our need for information? Or is it? In reality, I think this is a never ending story. We're still evolving this system, and there's lots of space for improvement, more information to gather and understand. Like nightly build failures for the IDE 2.0, CLI download counts from Homebrew or some other place, understanding, after all, is an endless journey. In any case, I'm glad you listened to this story. I hope it gave you some ideas on how to better understand the open source projects. You can find all my contacts on this last slide. Feel free to ask me anything you want. I'd be glad to hear from you all. I'm Silvano Cerza. See you next time.